This is a short video on deriving the ODE correspond to Nesterov acceleration gradient. So, first of all, this is Nesterov acceleration gradient. It's a two step extrapolated gradient update. You want to minimize something, or minimize function f with respect to variable uh, x, and then you now create another sequence y, and you update x using y on the gradient update, and then you extrapolate y using x and the previous point. Beta here is the extrapolation parameters. There are many ways to choose these parameters. And here we are going to use these scheme to choose the beta. It's just one of the way to choose the beta. So if you use other scheme, you will still get an ODE, but the expression will look different. Using this beta plug in here, and then assuming that function f is convex and elf smooth, that means the gradient is elf shape. You use the constant step size as 1 over L, plug in here. Then this NAG will be corresponding to a second order ODE that looks like this. The idea of deriving this ODE is trying to explain the convergence theory of gradient design with Nestorov acceleration that looks like this, which is in order to prove this, the machinery is quite heavy, so that's why people try to understand the behavior of this thing using other techniques, for example, ODE. So we are going to derive from here to here. So the technique you need to deriving this ODE is just Taylor series. So you have a function u. You want to look at this function u at x0 with respect to this small change. Then this is the second order Taylor series of function u. And what you want to do is very simple. First of all, this is the NAG. You have two equations. You want to combine them into one. So you want to plug in this equation into here. This is at k. This is at k plus 1. So you replace all the k here with k minus 1. So this equation becomes this equation. So now this is yk and this is yk. You can plug in this here. So you get this equation. What's next? You move this guy here, so this becomes subtraction, and this is the equation 4. So for this equation 4, what you have is finite difference terms. This is finite difference term, this is finite difference term. So this is the starting point. You want to form an ODE from this equation. So because finite difference equation is in discrete time, and ODE is in continuous time, so that means to link them, you need something called discretization. And here, the discretization is k equal to t divided by square root alpha, which means discrete iteration is time divided by step size. Notice that alpha is the gradient step size, but here we take the square root alpha as the discretization step size. And recall that this is just one particular way to do the discretization. You can do other way. You also get a way, but the ODE looks a little, little, little different. So what's the ODE discretization? So because you have this linkage between the discrete iteration and continuous time, so that means the continuous variable at time t is just equal to k times square root alpha. And you said that this is approximately equal to xk. Notice that this approximation becomes equal if we take this step size alpha to zero. Similarly, with this, we have these two expressions. So you have this finite difference term. You can just plug in all this approximation here, then you will get these expressions. And is it this expression, this term, and this term looks like this u function. That's why this is where we apply the Taylor's approximation. So this is the Taylor approximation for this function. You let u is x, x0 is t, this is the change, and then blah, 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 then you get these. This is just copy and paste of this line. Similarly, for this t minus square root alpha, now your change is negative. So that's why here you have a negative sign. And this is no difference than just copy this line by replacing the u, x0, delta x as these terms. So. We just show you that these two terms have these ODE expressions. So that means the finite difference terms is now approximately equal to these terms. 
But since now we put the O square root alpha term here, these are the high order term of the square root alpha. So now these things become equal. So the final difference equation now change to this whole long expression. We arrange, so we want to rearrange this equation, group the similar terms. So for this term have second order, this term has second order. So you plug in this alpha over two, multiply by beta. This is minus, you move to here, become addition. So you have this term here. For first order term, this is square root alpha, and here you have square root alpha times beta. This is plus, so you move to here, become minus, so you have this. And then this term negative move to here, become positive. So you have this. This term is in x, in x, here is in y. In long term, y is just x, so you can replace this y as x. So now you get this expression. The time variable t here is not very important, so that's why we can hide it. So this is a compact representation. So now we have an ODE, but not yet finished because we want to plug in the beta to see what is the compact notation of this ODE looks like. That means what is the coefficient here for the beta. And also we want to remove this guy. To remove this guy, we just need to take alpha to zero. We cannot take alpha equal to zero here because if that is the case, then this term is zero, this disappear, this is zero, this disappear, and same. So we have to plug in the beta and then take the alpha equal to zero. So notice that here we want beta k minus one. And as I said that you have many ways to choose beta, and as long as the beta fulfilling this rule, so one of the rule that is simple is this rule. So this is beta k. So for beta k minus 1, you have this expression. By algebra, you get this. And then since we consider the long-term effect, so k should be much larger than 2. So this is approximately equal to this. And then you plug in the time and the continuous time and the discrete iteration k. You have this expression. Then you change the k into this expression. So this is the expression for beta k minus 1. So with this beta k minus 1, you replace this with this guy and the same here. So this one plus the term, we have two here. This one minus term, so the one gone and this free thing become positive. So now you have this expression. And you can see here you have alpha, you have alpha, you have alpha, and you have alpha, and you have alpha here. So very naturally you want to take alpha equal to zero. That means take the limit. But before that you can divide the whole equation by alpha. So by divided by alpha, this term gone, this Square root alpha, square root alpha, go on. This alpha disappear. This term always have more than enough alpha, so this term stay there. So you get this expression. What's next? Very simple. You just take time derivative. No, no. You just take square root alpha go to zero. Take the limit. So this term disappear. And because this term disappear, one half and a two. That's why this term become one. And therefore you have the ODE, that is this equation here. So this is the illustration on how you derive from NAG to this ODE using this beta. That's it.